Hey everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome back to my subscribers. This is Bald Guy Money and I recently received this question from a viewer on my Instagram about traveling with money. So let me read it here for you. It says, Hey Bald Guy, do you know anything about traveling with money? I am traveling back home and I want to bring a large amount of money with me and don't know the rules. I know you're an expat in Dubai, so I thought maybe you know something on the topic. Thanks in advance. I love your channel. Well, thank you for your question and thanks for saying the nice thing about my channel. Uh, I am going to keep the sender of this question anonymous because I don't necessarily think they'd appreciate me uh, broadcasting their private business all over YouTube, but this is a topic I am actually extremely familiar with as being a foreigner living in Dubai. So the answer is actually quite simple. You can travel with large sums of money, even more than $10,000 across borders, despite there being a common belief that $10,000 is the maximum amount of money you can travel with. But don't turn the video off yet, please. There is a lot of extra important information that you need to know before you decide to travel with a large amount of money. So the first piece of information that is absolutely critical to know is that most countries have a limit of cash you can bring into the country without having to declare it. So let's bring up the first graphic. So for most countries around the world, that amount is going to be $10,000. And for countries that have their own dollar currency, it's usually $10,000 of whatever native dollar they have. That could be 10,000 Australian dollars or 10,000 Canadian dollars. And for the European Union, that amount is 10,000 euros. That said, don't take this general rule for granted. Every country, as I said, has a, a specific amount of money that you can travel into the country with. And it's very easy to check because every country also has a customs website that explains these limits in detail. So here's an example from Canada. And as you can see, traveling with uh, more than 10,000 Canadian dollars is actually traveling with 10,000 Canadian dollars or more. So if you have 10,000 or more, you have to declare it while entering the country. And as you can see here, it says monetary instruments include, but are not limited to stocks, bonds, bank drafts, checks, traveler's checks. So basically any form of money that you're traveling into the country with that is worth $10,000 or more has to be declared on the border. And the consequences of not declaring that when you reach the border is actually confiscation of whatever it is you have on your persons. So be very careful about this and know the limits, of course, because if you're not familiar with the limits, this can really come back to bite you. And that brings me to my next point. Once you know how much you need to declare when entering a country, make sure you check how much you have to declare when leaving the country you are currently in. Let's go back to that Canadian example really quickly because there was actually something about that mentioned on the website. And you can see here when leaving Canada, when departing Canada by air with $10,000 Canadian or more in your possession, you must report to the CBSA office within the airport before clearing security. Prior to departing by land, boat, or rail, so by train, report to the CBSA, so this is the Canadian Customs Office, uh, nearest your location. And let me make this perfectly clear. These rules are not strictly applying to Canada. These rules apply to basically every country in the world. I live in the United Arab Emirates and when I leave the country with a value of $10,000 or more on my persons in, as it was mentioned on that website, cash, bonds, uh, any kind of paper form that can be considered having value, I have to declare that as I'm leaving the country. Now, some of you might be asking by this point, why do customs agents want to know how much money you have on you? Why is it such a big deal to travel around with large sums of money? Isn't that your own private business? Well, in a perfect world, I agree. That should be your own private business, but these rules are in place uh, basically to stop people from traveling around with illegally acquired money and to prevent also cross-border money laundering. So uh, by forcing you basically to declare 
whether or not you have $10,000 or more when leaving or entering a country, they believe that this forces you to prove that your money has been acquired, earned by legal means. And that's very important. And, <clears throat> and that's very important because if you are not able to prove that your money was earned via uh, legal channels, then as I mentioned before, it's the same consequence basically as not declaring the money. It can be confiscated from you at whatever border you're at. So the best thing to make it easier when traveling with large sums of money is to prepare yourself with the following documents. Number one is a proof of employment letter. And if you're uh, self-employed, then a business license will suffice. This proves that you are either employed or you have a business for which you are able to generate a way to earn income. Number two, a bank withdrawal slip. Of course, if you've taken this money out of a bank, you should save your bank withdrawal slip to present it to people on the border when traveling with your money to prove that you have taken this out of a legitimate bank account. Now, if you're in a country that doesn't use, you know, a, a form of currency that is easily able to be exchanged in your country of destination, you might want to ch exchange this money in your starting country for, for example, US dollars before you leave. If you decide to do that, it is absolutely imperative that you save the foreign exchange receipt in order to present that to the border guards when you're leaving the country and entering your country of destination. Having these things will 100% make your experience of traveling with a large sum of money much, much smoother than not having them. And if you are preparing to travel with a large sum of money, you absolutely should have these documents ready to go with you. So now just a short recap on how to travel with large sums of money before I offer and propose some alternatives you may want to consider before deciding to travel. Here it is. So number one, check the declaration amount and that goes for the country you're leaving and the country you're actually going to. Check how much money you can leave with without having to declare it and how much money you have to declare when you arrive to your country. Knowing this amount can prevent you from meeting with some sad circumstances should you accidentally not declare that money thinking you don't have to declare it when you reach the country or as you leave the country you are leaving. Number two, save your withdrawal receipts. This is the best way to prove that you have taken your money out of your own bank account and have not received it by some kind of illegal means. Number three, save your currency conversion receipts. If you're converting your money, for example, to Canadian dollars, Australian dollars, US dollars, euros in your country before you travel to your destination, save this receipt because again, this paper trail will add to the story that the money that you're traveling with is your money and that you have earned it by legal means. As I mentioned also, have a pay slip, have proof of employment. If you're self-employed, have a business license. Be able to prove that you have a way of earning income that is legal. Number five, don't forget to declare your money as you're leaving the country. This is absolutely important because most people think you only have to declare money when you're arriving in a country. That's not true. When you're traveling with a certain amount of money or more, you will have to declare it as you leave that country. And the last point is, of course, don't forget to declare your money when you enter your destination country. This is totally imperative. And remember, the consequences of not doing so mean that they can take everything away from you that you are traveling with. So I hope this has been helpful for you, but if you're not convinced to traveling with money or you're open to alternatives to get money from one country to another, here are a few alternatives that you might want to look into. Number one, opening a US dollar account in an international bank. For example, Citibank offers this. If you have a Citibank account in one country and a Citibank account in another country, you can have US dollar accounts 
open in both countries and transfer money free of charge. Well, free of charge, they actually do charge you, I should say, a 1% transaction fee to go from account to account. Uh, and that's in the specific example of Citibank. I don't know, maybe there are other banks that don't charge you such a transaction fee, but this will make it easier for you to transfer large sums of money, specifically US dollars from one country to another country. Number two, you can transfer money via Bitcoin or stablecoin. This one is for people who are kind of into cryptocurrencies and understand how these things work. If you have an account in, that's linked to a, an account that you can access in another country, you could simply purchase Bitcoin or stablecoin, then convert it back into regular currency and put it into your bank account from one country to another. Number three is you could transfer money via Western Union. I mean, this is an old tried and true method. The only downside that I see of transferring money via Western Union is that they charge ridiculous fees to do this. Sometimes it's more than 7% and it's absolutely not the way I would personally go. But it is an easy way to do it if you're not comfortable with traveling with large sums of money. Number four, you can do a regular bank transfer but some of the risks of this are, again, they might, and they often do, specifically when you're in countries that are attracting a lot of expat workers, they do charge you large sums of money to make these transfers, often in excess of 5%. And the other issue is sometimes there are transfer issues that, uh, that come up. I know somebody who actually transferred a large sum of money via a bank transfer from a bank in the UAE to a bank in their home country. The bank got tied up in some clearance processes and there were other technical glitches, which I wasn't exactly privy to the details, but the fact of the matter is that person actually froze that money for a period of six or seven weeks and was unable to access it. So. I don't think that's personally for me the best option to go in. However, if you do some research, you might decide that's, that's a good option for you. Now, I'm perfectly aware there are other ways to do this. These aren't the only ways to transfer money from country to country and traveling it might, with it might not be the thing for you. But these are the top alternatives with respect to how I see them. And the easiest one, if you ask for me, is to have a US dollar account where you can travel uh, transfer from one uh, a bank in one country to the same bank in another country. And the number two option for me would just be to transfer it in stable coins from one account to another, because at the end of the day, that's probably the future of where this business is going. Uh, that said, as I mentioned, you have to do your own research to decide which option is the best for you. Now, that's all I have for this video. And uh, I do wanna ask you, please, if you're not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button now. That helps make a little bit of noise for the algorithm. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions for me, you know you can always drop them in the comments section here. I will always respond to your comments and questions. And I just might make a video about them if it's something that I think that other people are going to be interested in. So make sure to drop me a comment. That said, that's it for this video. I wish you all success. I wish you all happiness. I do hope to see you in the next video. Ta-ta for now.